everyone, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to the Slowest Blitz, where we are playing Asphodel. This is turn 15, I believe. Something like that. 15? Yes. Uh, let's jump into things, shall we? We have completed Alteration 3, which is pretty nice for us. That gets us some, some uh, little items to be able to use. Uh, the big target is Alt 4 for us initially. Um, and we have commenced the invasion of Facia. So let's see how that goes. We got a proclamation from Pyrene or Pyrene or Pyrene or however the fuck you say it. New prophet going on over there. Um, so we got three battles. Belagor. All right. This is our prophet leading in the majority of our black centaur. Let's hope. Yeah. Easy peasy. Gonna bowl over this without any any issues. Uh, okay, so that was mostly just PD, but a few light infantry. A few, uh, 50 gold. You know, we take those. We got a battle in Llama, where we have a good portion of our mannequins, centaurs, and centaur warriors. Um, and this is also just gonna be PD. There's a couple mannequins here, probably. Oh, we didn't lose anything. Nice. Okay. And then we have a battle in New Coast where we are bringing up even more mannequins, more centaur warriors, and some black centaurs on the flanks, uh, and then a group of Sagittarian carcasses and other centaurs, and all PD. Kind of to be expected, right? Um, after the big loss that Thaseus, well, not loss, the amount of damage they took from that heavy cav province and the um, damage that we dealt to that expansion force, after that, it's kind of to be expected that they're not going to, you okay, know, just poke their head out with just a few units in one particular scenario, knowing that they have now been attacked. Um, so... Steampos is a heroic endurance. Let's take a look at that. We've got heroic endurance, so increased fatigue reduction. Very nice. Let's check the uh, Hall of Fame real fast. Yeah, we're fucking up there. Homemade sweet, tall thigh boys, Stymphos, and Dollmaker all up there. Very nice. Um, okay, what are we doing? We got the... Um, the attack on Facia begins in earnest. So let's talk our way through that. We are going to be splitting up forces a little bit here or there. We want to get on top of Facia ASAP, but we can see they are kind of hanging out, right? So um, we don't want to hit their capital with the concept that there's going to be a lot of PD, basically their entire army. We don't want to hit their capital unless we think what we're going to hit it with is going to be able to do the deal, seal the deal. That being said, we are still going to poke it with something and it's just going to be a very small non-committal because here's the thing. So if he doesn't patrol, right, um, then five centaurs could potentially, five black centaurs could potentially take his PD. It might be close, um, but it's a possibility. I probably shouldn't be risking this. Hi. Hi. But we're going to try and do it anyways, right? Um, we're also breaking off down towards Pugria, again, with another small contingent of black centaurs. Uh, similar type of situation. Um, we are going to be hitting into Valador with goodly portion, basically the entire stack from uh, Lamia, right? So this is all just going to come down here. Partially, um, I don't know if this is the greatest idea, right? It seems like he consolidated this turn there. I, I would not assume that he's going to stay there. I would assume that he's going to try to go to Norfangs. There's a possibility he tries to move this and what's in Basia out to Norfangs. And that we could kind of get fucked by not sending everything to Norfangs. But when I started to consider that, 
I looked at everything that we are already sending to Norfangs. And we've got so much here. We have 200 units coming here. And the vast majority of our Black Centaurs are here. It's just such an overwhelming amount that I don't think it's going to matter. This could backfire, though. Even I think even if he moves everything here, it's possible he does have his Titan of Forethought. Um, if he's got, like, a kit for that, and he moves everything into Norfangs and moves Consolidates from Valador into Norfangs, it's possible that we're fighting a comparatively sized army, but he has all the magic and a, a potentially kitted out Titan. Kitted out seems unlikely this early in the in the, the game, especially considering how much more difficult it is to get construction stuff now, because now you have to get, instead of level 2 construction getting you lesser magic items, it's level 3 construction getting you lesser magic items, right? So... I feel like the kitting out your Titan strategy is way slower now than it used to be. Um, but it's possible, especially possible if, like, Casey is working in concert with Ulm. So that is something that we do need to consider. But I think we're going to be okay. We're going we're gonna to move into Valador. We're going to consolidate into Norfangs. So in theory, if all four of these succeed, we will put his cap under... Um, under siege and we'll be able to reinforce that very easily there is of course the fact that he can sail right so he could immediately abandon his capital come down here to vlaclez and or hit any of these other locations around here and begin to be a very big thorn in my side by just sailing back and forth um and if he does i mean we don't really have anything to do against that it's basically if if he decides to do that, we're going to just have to sit there and take it, right? Like, group up, take down uh, his capital, group up, get over to Vaclez, take down that fort, etc., etc. So, um, that's the generalized concept. We are moving up reinforcements behind. We got another stack of mannequins and centaur warriors coming into Belagor. Um, we have a, another stack... Yeah, we have another stack of centaur archers and mannequins and centaurs and things like that uh, coming coming into New Coast. Uh, and then we have more reinforcements coming from the capital in the vein of more mannequins, more black centaurs, etc., etc. So um, we are really piling in all of our military force into Facia ASAP. Uh, again, the idea is, is if we can win by turn 20, you know, that's a, that's a very good early war goal. Um, and we will be very strong. We'll be able to just kind of like chill for a while. Obviously, this puts us in a very weak position for Man, for Bandar Log, for Ulm. And I'm not making a lot of diplomatic overtures at this point, but I am trying to talk to some of my neighbors um and things have been kind of 50 50 on that regard so we'll see it's possible that uh i get jumped um it's possible that someone tries to like i think man is the most likely kind of like scenario we have all of this um open territory up here we had a bit of a border dispute with ederol and iron peaks previously um so we'll we'll just have to see how it goes uh, not really much else that we can do about that. We have fucking Lucky over here growing a fortress on the Shadowglade, um, which is gonna be awesome for us. And then aside from that, recruiting more Lizard Shamans, more Centaur Warriors, uh, another Dryad Hag, and we're getting some Minotaur Warriors. Uh, and then back in the capital, another Dryad Hag and more Black Centaurs. We are, I'm, we gotta be careful about the Minotaur Warriors, right? Especially the actual specific Minotaur Warriors themselves. They are 50 gold a pop versus the 40 gold from the regular Minotaurs. But the regular Minotaurs are skirmishers, which makes them way more difficult to deal with. Um, these guys are 40 gold a piece. So if we get too many of them, 40 gold, um, 
uh, a year for for fucking uh, upkeep. So if we get too many of them, that can be a very big drain on our overall income. But they are very good at dealing with giant units that have uh, high defense, right? Uh, because they still hit really fucking hard. They're very good at dealing with heavy cav, right? That has high defense because they still hit really fucking hard. That applies here and here, right? I say really good, but they can trade well, especially if we have buffs, right? Things like uh, Alt-4, where we get group bark skin, that kind of concept. So trying to kind of like um, measure our options against uh, the potential for someone like Ulm or Man or Bandar Log coming in against us. Bandar Log terrifies me because I still don't know anything about Bandar Log. Um, right? I still don't know anything about Bandar Log. And, and these guys are nasty. Potentially extremely nasty, depending on what kind of bless he's taken. Um, so it could be a big deal. But that's pretty much it, right? Um, we are sneaking some scouts around. We are doing some site searching here or there. Uh, we're building a lab up in Shade Forest. We're getting another um, sage over in Shadowglade. We'll probably be popping sages for the rest of the game as best we can. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Oh, right. I forgot about this. We are making a little bit of a dip from uh, magic research. So we had been going straight for Alt-4. We're going to be making a slight dip into Enchantment 2 and Evocation 1. Um, specifically, we're going for Enchantment 2 um, for the option of, I think, in Venom Arrows primarily, right? Uh, we can cast this on a couple of different... Um, or we can cast this on basically almost all of our mages. And we have a lot of... Not a lot. We have a couple of these Centaur Hierophants, which really don't have a lot to do with Nature 1 right now. But they can cast that buff on to... Things like these Centaurs. And then all of a sudden, uh, these guys can do quite a bit more than they otherwise would be. That poison can really tick up um, against, like, un unguarded units, right, that they can actually damage. So uh, that's a potential option there. And it's very quick for us to grab that. We'll get it in uh, a single turn, basically. And then we're also going to be grabbing Evocation 1, um, also partially for Vine Arrow, which is potentially helpful. For the exact same reason, again, giving our nature ones something to do, but also in preparation of other stuff, uh, doing things like starfires. Is that the thing that I'm thinking of? Yes. Doing things like starfires um, with our sages is a potential option as well. Um, so yeah, just a quick little dip. That might end up costing us, right? Uh, the, the idea that I had is that right now, because we're we're moving so many mages out for army support, is, is that we're not going to hit alt for in three turns anyways, right? Um, well, we probably would, maybe, with sages. If we do, it would be just barely right which means we would hit alt four in three turns anyways which is what we're gonna probably do regardless so um that was basically the generalized concept there so that's the overall game plan pretty quick and easy we'll see how it goes fingers crossed see you next time bye bye everybody hey everybody thanks for watching if you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. It really helps me out. If you'd like to see me live, head over to my Twitch at twitch.tv forward slash the distant horizon.